During the summer of 2019, Carol Smith signed up for Facebook. According to her profile, she was a politically conservative mother from North Carolina, said she was interested in politics, parenting, and Christianity, and she followed accounts for Fox News and then President Donald Trump. NBC News' Brandy Zadrozny reports, though Smith had never expressed interest in conspiracy theories, in just two days, Facebook was recommending she join groups dedicated to QAnon, a sprawling and baseless conspiracy theory and movement that claimed Trump was secretly saving the world from a cabal of pedophiles and Satanists. But it didn't end there. Smith didn't follow the recommended QAnon groups, but whatever algorithm Facebook was using to determine how she should engage with the platform pushed ahead just the same. Within one week, Smith's feed was full of groups and pages that had violated Facebook's own rules, including those against hate speech and disinformation. That's all really bad, but it gets worse because Carol Smith isn't real. Her account was created by a researcher employed by Facebook who was specifically studying how Facebook misinforms and polarizes its users. The company knew what it was doing. They knew they were driving people to those extreme viewpoints, and they knew it years ago. A senior reporter for NBC News who brought Carol's story to our attention is Brandy Zadrozny, and she joins me now. Um, Brandy, take us through the context of this. What, what, what is your reporting based trying to do in, in creating these profiles. Yeah, hey, Chris. Um, so this was um, one of um, tens of thousands of documents that we have been pouring over the last three weeks as part of a consortium with 17 other news organizations looking at the documents that uh, whistleblower Francis Haugen has handed over to the SEC and Congress. Um, a lot of this, a lot of these documents were also the basis of those blockbuster Wall Street Journal reports that we saw. So we've been pouring over these documents and this is one of many examples of internal research that we saw that um, genius researchers really inside Facebook, we're talking PhDs um, who really know their stuff, had been doing to sound the alarm um, to Facebook's product divisions and Facebook's uh, features and Facebook executives to say, you are causing harm on your platform. Now, also what this highlighted is that this was in the summer of 2019. Now, that it wasn't until October of 2020 that Facebook said, oh, hey, we're going to take QAnon down, they're actually quite dangerous. This is after um, several violent incidences, including um, some shootings. So it's not like it was any um, mystery to them. We know now that they knew for over a year this was a violent conspiracy theory thriving on its platform through its own recommendation algorithms, and it waited and waited and waited until a month before the election to call it quits. So here's, I want to ask a very finely parsed question that I've been mulling on as I read your story. Uh, and let me see if I can articulate this specifically. Like, so the algorithm is predicting that this woman with this profile would like this QAnon stuff, right? And it keeps pushing it towards her, even when she doesn't affirmatively say, yes, get me into that group. But at some level, it's like, the algorithm's correct? <laughs> like, they, I mean, they have her pegged as the kind of person who might be Q curious. Like, I, I, I'm trying to get it, like, what... At what level is the algorithm doing the work here? And at what level is the work being done by people's nested preferences and trust relationships external to Facebook? Yeah, um, that's a very well-worded question. You know, <laughs> earlier this year, I think about a lot because Nick Clegg, with that's um, Facebook's VP of Global Comms, he made this blog post where he basically said, hey, it takes two to tango. And basically... It's almost like to me, someone's Facebook is pulling these people across yeah. the dance floor. And when they finally get them on the dance floor, hey, dancing's pretty fun. So, right. you know, you relent and you join these groups. It's hard to say sort of chicken or egg here. Um, but the fact is that even people who didn't get in at first and didn't want to be a part of these groups at first slowly made the transition over. And for what it's worth, you know, Facebook does have this really interesting project going on called uh, Project Dr Rebel, and it's mm -hmm. named for the 17th century um, Dutch inventor who invented the first navigable submarine, so you can get the metaphor. And it's diving deep to find out how do these people get in these Facebook groups? How do they get to QAnon? Is it a crunchy mom's group? Like, what is this third degree of separation right. that really 
pours people into these rabbit holes. And can they, these researchers are tasked with understanding, can we somehow cover up or turn down the algorithm on those initial rabbit holes and maybe fix it that way? It's a really interesting research project. But as we know about Facebook's research projects, they usually don't um, translate to any policy. Well, that's and that to me is what is so striking and in, in many ways damning about so much of the reporting, including this, which is the, what, what you're seeing, a consistent theme, a reflection of internal to Facebook, precisely the same concerns of public reporting about the nature of the tools, about um, essentially doing whatever gets the most engagement, even at the cost of social harm, about pushing people towards um, disinformation and more conspiracy sites. And that that is exactly what the researchers in Facebook are looking at while this reporting is having an outside and their PR people are saying, you're being crazy. And Facebook's own people are looking, running their own experiments and saying, like, we have a problem here. Yeah, I mean, the first step that I did when I got all of these documents is I made a list of all the researchers that I've been talking to for the last half decade who had been calling these warning signs and been calling out the platform, especially for the recommendation engine. And, you know, I, I got one Stanford researcher on the phone and I was looking over these documents with her and she was so angry because you're exactly right. Facebook comms and Facebook top brass has have been gaslighting us for years saying, oh, that's not happening on the platform. Right. You really can't say that. That's not fair. It's actually quite nice for your grandchildren. And they, they knew the whole time. They knew the whole time. Yeah.